evening. Good evening. We are so pleased to have you with us this evening. We're excited to learn about, you know, cooking up curiosity and how, learning how to cultivate your child's talent through curiosity at home. This Family Academy is going to be brought to us from our um, gifted um, education department, as well as our school health initiative program, SHIP. So with this, we're going to, um, you're going to learn a lot tonight. We're going to have a lot of fun. I think you probably thought we were going to be cooking tonight, but we won't. We're going to have a recipe for success and how you can help your children to um, cultivate their curiosity. So with that, uh-oh, someone does not have three dots. Um, I will look for you and try to get you renamed. If you can put your full name in the direct message to me, um, then I will rename you on this end. All right, so with that, I I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Ann Colorado, and then we're also going to hear tonight from Dr. Amy Lazif um, from our SHIP program, and I turn it over to you ladies. Well, good evening. Uh-oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good evening, everybody. I'm Ann Colorado, and I'm the coordinator for gifted education and talent development for WJCC Public Schools. Amy. And I'm Dr. Amy Lazif. I'm the supervisor for the School Health Initiative Program. SHIP is a grant funded program. We're funded by the Williamsburg Health Foundation, and we're focused on health and wellness for our students, family, and community. Thank you. And we're partnering together tonight to um, focus on building talent at home through curiosity um, with questioning and with a SHIP activity that you will learn about how to do later in your house. So I apologize to the kids. We're not cooking or reading tonight. We're really giving your parents information on how to help you, but it's great for you to listen to so that you can help them when you guys want to do this activity. So it's really important for parents to realize what a large role they play in cultivating children's, their children's talent at home. So we're gonna share a little bit of background information with you about talent development and curiosity. And then we'll share a rich curiosity building activity with you that all families can relate to, cooking food and feeding our families. So last year, if any of you happened to come to Family Academy, I shared last year that curiosity and creativity are the building blocks of talent. And talent um, is something that every child has in one way or another. Every one of us has talent in something. And curiosity can be defined as a strong desire to learn or know something. So basically, curiosity is about wanting to learn, and it's a necessary ingredient for growing talent in our children. Different researchers have linked curiosity to creativity, to happiness, to academic achievement, and to motivation. And they have demonstrated that parents were very important to fostering curiosity in their children. As for creativity, there's more to creativity than the arts. Creativity is related to developing talents. And when we think of it about developing talents is really about thinking of things in new and different ways, stoking children's imaginations and encouraging them to think outside of the box. And creativity can allow children to come up with innovative ideas in a talent area. Curiosity and creativity go hand in hand, and we think that you'll be able to see that in our presentation, though we're focusing explicitly on curiosity. And we also want to point out to you that nurturing your child's curiosity, creativity, and talent development at home actually supports the Virginia Department of Education's five C's for portrait of a graduate. And we put a little picture of that up here because it's really powerful to know that you as parents are 
can really impact your students' critical thinking skills, collaboration skills, creative thinking skills, communication skills, and citizenship skills at home every day. In general, every talent area follows a specific pathway that starts with exposure or nurturing and ends with eminence or expertise. And um, the instruction and practice phase is really the part that takes a long, long time. A lot of researchers have pointed out to the 10,000 hour rule for people who wanna become experts or eminent in their field. We, in our presentation, are really focusing on exposure and nurturing. And um, as parents, we can take cues from our student, from our children, by noticing what interests them and what they show curiosity about. Personally, I feel like the goal of talent development shouldn't be eminence. It should really be um, using our talent development to hone our strength areas to lead us to a future path of learning, work, or joy. But noticing what makes our children curious can help us support them on their journey in their talent areas. So in the age of technology, we certainly don't want to uh, curiosity to become a lost skill in our children. And this quote, this powerful quote, a curious mind is never bored, is so true. As parents, it's up to us at home to help our children balance their love of technology or reading, watching movies, whatever it is, with their natural curiosity by exploring areas of interest. During the course of our presentation, I will drop some links in the chat box so that you can um, click on them and save them to get further ideas of how to develop talent um, curiosity at home. And please feel free to explore those um, later at a later date. Um, for right now, we're getting ready to start um, focusing on curiosity with a rich activity. And we're gonna use the number one item from the to-do list that I shared with parents last year, which was constant talking, questioning, and discussing with your children. And that will be paired with the activity in order to apply that tip to nurture the curiosity. It's one of the best ways to nurture a curious mind. And so when we talk about talking, questioning, discussing, these are some examples of what we mean. And I will drop another link about um, questioning that you could use, though geared for children, it will give you a good idea of the different levels of questioning. Um, but really, we start with talking. And um, that's, that's just a, a basic way to start and then get to the questioning and discussion but constant talking at home, um, even though sometimes you might want some peace and quiet, it's really very important for us to do with our children starting in infancy, believe it or not. Never pass up an opportunity to talk to your children, even if it's just running commentary. The more words to which your children are exposed to through talking, the more their brains grow and those neurons and dendrites in their brains grow. And as kids get older, you switch naturally from running commentary to questioning and then to discussion. And elementary discussions can really revolve around anything with home and school life, um, can involve uh, revolve around movies you watch, books you read together, really anything. And as students are older, upper elementary or into middle and high, then you can get into other things like current events and whatnot. So this graphic talk, question, discuss um, relates to the classic Bloom's taxonomy of thinking that will be in one of the articles that um, I'll share with you. So now that we've covered some basic background about curiosity as part of talent development, I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Lazev to um, get us going on the next part of our presentation, our learning activity. So um, Dr. Lazev, if I miss a cue for advancing the slides, just please um, ask me to do so for you. Thank you so much. So what we're gonna be talking about tonight is an activity that you can do with your whole family together. 
and some tips about how to extend this out throughout the year. And when Dr. Colorado and I were talking about what would make this really fun for everyone and exciting, we wanted to pick an activity that was something that you were already doing as a family. Um, we know how busy you are and we know how hard it is to kind of add in completely new things into what you're doing. So instead, we wanna take something that we know you're already doing. You're preparing meals for your family. You're feeding your family. Um, I know sometimes I think, wow, I have to feed my kids three times a day, every day, <laughs> right? It's a lot sometimes, um, but it's an activity we're already doing. So we're going to, take that idea of dinner time, of meal time, and integrate some ideas for you about how to um, integrate curiosity and discussion to make that meal time um, a time of growth, both, both intellectual growth, but also culinary growth. So we're gonna expand your minds and your palates all at the same time. So, this activity is going to involve this book. I don't know if you can see this, but um, it's the book Stone Soup. Um, Stone Soup is a book that you may have read at some point in your life um, about a village that comes together where everyone brings ingredients to the soup to make a delicious soup. Um, and we're going to be going through some ideas about how to use this story with your family um, to bring some curiosity into your cooking and your meal time. So if we can go to the next slide. Thank you. So what we've created for you is a curiosity kit that your students will be receiving at school and can bring home. Um, it's going to come in a little ship bag and it's going to include some cards and we're going to show you on the slides what the cards look like, but you'll also get a copy of these cards in your curiosity kit. So don't worry about taking notes, you're going to have all this information provided to you in the kit. So to start off, we're going to suggest that you read the story Stone, Stone Soup with your family and then engage in some really open-ended questions with your family. And you can adjust this based on the age of your children and what they found interesting about the story. Um, and on your, in your curiosity kit, there'll be some open-ended questions. Things like, um, was the stone magic? Um, were there, different ingredients that the villagers brought to the soup that made the soup taste better or worse. Um, who was helping who? And was anyone in the story getting tricked? So different ideas to open up discussion. Um, on the cards, you'll also see um, there'll be a card for stone soup and then a card to use all year long. And those will have some more general discussion questions about how you can talk um, or use the meal prep time as a time to kind of come together and start talking at the dinner table. So we know that we all have a tendency to kind of want to get dinner on the table quickly. Um, so our children may go and get on their devices during meal time. Um, so that we can focus on getting dinner to the table. But we're gonna suggest, you know, give it a try, maybe start out once a week or twice a week and integrate your children into the cooking and meal prep time with you. So how do you do that? How do you integrate them into meal time with um, still getting the meal onto the table and still getting everything cooked? So as we go to our next slide, um, we're going to ask you to think about the planning. So how can we get the ingredients together to make your stone soup in this first activity? Um, we're going to give you some tips on the cards that show you how you can hunt for ingredients and involve your children in that process of looking for the ingredients. 
Um, your children are all learning about nutrition at school. Um, they're learning about my plate, which is uh, the new pyramid. So when you were in school, you may have learned about the nutrition pyramid. And now our students learn about my plate, which gives them an idea of how to put together a healthy meal. So we're going to ask our students and our, our children to look for the different food groups that you may already have in your home and what they can bring to the stone soup. Dr. Um, Lizab, we, oh, we might have forgotten to mention that we're not including the stone soup recipe here because everybody's stone soup it's going to be based on what is in your pantry, in your fridge. So um, that's part of the fun of this is that we're not giving you any set things. Your family can really take this however they want to take it. So I just wanted to make sure that we mentioned that because that food hunt, that ingredient hunt, that's that's a really cool thing. And, you know, a lot of times we don't have the ingredients that we want to make something, but how can we improvise um, in that area? So I just, I don't know if we forgot to mention that earlier. Thank you, that's a great point. So we want um, to get our children involved in that process of searching out for the different ingredients and letting your children all bring different ingredients that they may be interested in to the table to integrate into your soup or into your meals throughout the week. Um, going on to our next card, we're talking about timing and temperature. So we know that when we put our soup together, we have to figure out how long our soup is going to cook for, what temperature to cook it at. And we're encouraging you to think of this as kind of a mini experiment that you can do with your children to have them think, well, what happens if we cook this soup a little bit longer? or if we add ingredients in in a different order. Um, you may have tried cooking, um, let's say pasta with your children in the past, and you know that how long you cook it for changes the texture of the pasta. It may go from kind of uh, crunchy to very soft and mushy, and maybe the members of your family all like it at a different texture. So this idea of kind of experimenting with your food to see what everyone likes and doesn't like and to see how things come out helps our children become more curious about how what they're doing impacts the outcome. It's like a, a mini experiment. And along with that, if you adopt the, the phrase, what if, what if mm -hmm. we boiled it longer? What if? we don't have an onion to put in our soup. Um, that could really open things up for our kids and help them learn that there's not one right way to cook our food, to make a recipe. Like, uh, And that, that really um, helps even our youngest kids uh, be curious about the concepts of time, temperature, and cooking tools or utensils. Right. Are you um, ready for me to move or? Sure. Okay. Um, you'll definitely see in the story stone soup that there is no right or wrong recipe. So all the villagers bring a different ingredient and together they make a delicious soup. And we really want to encourage our, our kids to think about it as there's no right or wrong here. There's different ways to try it and to see how it comes out. And they may like a recipe, a particular way of doing it more than another way. Um, but by thinking about it as just different variations and exploring those variations, we really can open them up to being more adventurous with their eating and with the way they're thinking about the world around them. Um, and that's true even in things like measuring. So we know that um, as we're putting together recipes, we have to measure how much of an ingredient goes in. And we want them to start thinking of creative ways of doing that. 
Um, so what do you do if you don't have a measuring cup nearby? What else can you use? Um, what if you have, um, you know, you cut your carrots up into really big pieces or really small pieces? Do they cook differently then? Um, so how, how we measure our food, how we put our food into the soup can make a big difference in the outcome. And we can get really creative in the ways we're doing that. Um, the more we involve our children in being really active participants, the more that they'll become curious about different variations and the more they'll be curious about where the ingredients come from. And that can expand also a whole new world for them. Um, so they can get curious about the culture of the food. Um, so where does, where is their food grown is a great question to ask. Um, are the ingredients local to Virginia? Are they local to our country? Um, getting the, your children involved in exploring the culture of their food is a wonderful way to get them to ask questions and to start doing a little research and discussion. Um, okay, so as we're waiting for our meal to cook, this can be a great time for family activity as well. Um, we're gonna provide some links for you that have some good activities to do that um, can be done very quickly while you're waiting for dinner to get ready. Um, these can be little things like um, different games you play or time to have a little dance party while you wait for your dinner to cook. Um, and that can be a great way to get some of the wiggles out as well, having a little dance party before you try and sit down to eat calmly before a meal. Okay, so going on to our next card, um, serving and eating the meal. Um, at any meal time, we wanna encourage our children to really talk and to question um, as they're eating. So a good way to start off is really by asking your children what they're interested in talking about. Um, what about the meal interests them? Did they like the tastes, the textures of what they were eating? Um, are they interested in finding out more about the culture of that meal? You can also talk just more generally about their day. Um, sometimes we have a tendency to just say, you know, was, how was your day, was it good? And then you get those one word answers back yeah, it was good, or no, it wasn't, without a whole lot of description. So in our cards that we'll provide in the curiosity kit, you'll see a number of different discussion prompts that are really there to um, open up and provide more open-ended questions. Um, so maybe share the highs and low points of your day, or share an act of kindness you saw happen at school today so that it gives your children a little bit more room to really think about what they've seen and what they've done and what parts that they wanna share with you. Um, so really keep open-ended in your thinking about dinner time conversation. And then finally, we move on to our last card, um, cleaning up after the meal and leftovers. Um, and even something as simple as what to do with the leftovers can be a great way to get your kids curious about the world around them. Um, what happens to those leftovers? Is there a creative way you can think to reuse those? So if you've um, made a soup, can you turn it into something else the next night? Um, do you have some leftover vegetables that can be made into a stir fry? Or if you've made a chicken, could you make sandwiches as leftovers for the next day? 
So asking your children to think about that, how could they kind of recreate and transform their leftovers into something they'd like to eat next? Um, it's also a great time to ask um, what happens kind of in our country to leftover food. That's a great discussion. Um, so maybe your children have a favorite restaurant. Um, maybe they, they love Chick-fil-A and you might want to talk about, well, what do you think happens to the leftovers there? That could spark a great conversation. Um, maybe you can ask the next time you're at the restaurant and see what do they do with their leftovers. Um, getting those conversations started is a great way to get your children really curious about how the world around them works. Okay. And finally, that kind of leads us to that idea of research and problem solving. So we want to um, encourage you to kind of spur your children on to get to take the parts of what they've been interested in and extend it. Um, maybe they've really liked a meal. Um, maybe you've made a stir fry for dinner and they're really interested in finding out more about where do stir fries come from? What culture is that part of? How do people in that culture eat differently? Um, maybe they want to extend that and while you're cooking, kind of get onto the computer and look up more about Asian cooking and different ways of using utensils, uh, eating with chopsticks instead of a fork, perhaps. Um, so we can turn our, our um, interest into thinking about the world around us and, and becoming curious about it. Um, so our, our intention for tonight was really to share some ideas for you that hopefully will spur you on to thinking about new ways to do dinner time. Um, and we know that you may not have time to do this every night, but it may want to start out one night a week. Um, start with stone soup as your first week, read the story together and then create your own stone soup. And maybe pick a night a week going forward and pick a different theme, different part of the world to pick a cuisine from. Bring your kids with you to the supermarket to explore new ingredients and become curious about new foods to try. And really get that discussion going with them around uh, dinner prep time and around meal time. Um, embedding curiosity in everything you do is really the easiest way to get your kids interested. Um, it doesn't have to be kind of an extra activity. It can just be integrated into that everyday meal time with your family. And talking and discussing and questioning doesn't cost any money at all. So it's a real, and it can be done anywhere. So it's it's easy to integrate into any activity, but um, we're, we're really excited that we were able to partner together to share these ideas with you using SHIP as well as talent development. It was just a natural fit for us. So um, Dr. Lazev, would you like to share um, the kit? Um, I think if you don't hold it too close, like if you pull it back, well, maybe that, wait, wait, you almost had it. I'll tell you when, wait. <laughs> maybe if I turn off my background. Yeah, so okay. with I, the, no, background, the background, it's going to be virtually impossible to see the kit, so. <laughs> yes, I will turn off my background so we can see better. Okay, here we go. Can you see that now? Yes. Yes. Okay, so your curiosity kit that your child will be receiving at school will include a bag like this. These are um, great little cooler bags um, that are like backpacks. Um, and in it will be your very own copy of Stone Soup for you to use. 
um, you'll see these laminated cards that are your conversation cards that will take you through the stone soup activity and also day-to-day -day activity going forward around dinner time. And you'll have this great little clip that's a refrigerator magnet so that you can stick these right on your fridge at home and have it nearby. And then we've also included one more magnet. We really like magnets here um, that has the My Plate Food Groups and some great information for you with this um, meal planner uh, handout for you to use um, that will help you organize meals and ingredients and utilize your food groups in ways you may never have thought of before in the past. So that's what will be in your stone soup creativity uh, and curiosity kit. We hope to get those out to the students within the next week. Yes, thank you for sending them. <laughs>